Hey YouTube friends and family, how's everybody doing? I hope today is a very good day for all of you. I wanted to get on here again and share some of my ramblings and I hope that you find some of it interesting. You see friends on my last video I noted that there was a little bit of controversy over words. Words are very powerful. You've heard me say that many times. You've heard me say that it's not so much the words as how you use the words. A lot of our words have different meanings and yet when said can be taken wrong no matter how the words spelled or the meaning that we want to share. An emotion that perhaps we feel deep within and we're hoping other people can pick up on. I'm going to share with you something that I shared a long time ago in a video and I want you to think about the meaning behind me sharing this. You see friends, quite often in my comments I come across people that didn't really understand what I was saying at all. Either they didn't actually listen to the whole video because sometimes my videos are quite long or perhaps they just didn't grasp the impact on the words and the way that I was saying them to my viewers, my subscribers. I'm going to use one sentence and I'm going to give one sentence that has eight words. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight words. I'm going to use an eight word sentence and I'm going to give that one sentence five different meanings. Listen to my voice and the emphasis I put on any one word as I say the sentence. I will begin. I did not say she ate the pie. Meaning I did not say it. Perhaps I insinuated. I did not say she ate the pie. Perhaps somebody else said it. I did not say she ate the pie. Perhaps somebody else ate the pie. I did not say she ate the pie. I hinted, but I never actually said it. I did not say she ate the pie. She ate the pudding. One sentence said five different ways can mean five different things. But how are you supposed to know this? Listening skills. How well are you listening? Are you a good listener? A lot of times in here we need to be good listeners to understand what it is that our friends and family are trying to relate to us. <laughs> we know just from the current administration, first term and second term, as well as the first time they ran for office, that we're not really the best listeners in the world. Wouldn't you agree? You know, on that last video, I uh, went away from it feeling very heavy-hearted. In fact, 
I was very disturbed most of the night. I don't understand a lot of what's going on in our world, and I'm sure you don't either. Oh, we try to figure it out. We spend a lot of hours sharing thoughts, sharing news reels and articles and posts and videos, trying to figure out what is actually happening. Sad thing is ignorance has governed for many generations. It's time for our generation and those thereafter to bear witness to the wrongs and unite for the better of all. The fact that we as a society have not evolved past this because of ill-thinking leadership must be changed. No longer can we, the people of this earth or this country, blindly walk with the storm. It is time to walk and push against it. The storm is very destructive. Enough is actually here. Enough is enough. We are born equal each and every one of us, we all come into the world the same way. We're born equal. And we have the right to live equal. That is a birthright. We have blossomed into a time where technologies far outweigh the true humane, the caring, the common sense of things. My heart's very heavy, as I said. I can hardly bear the weight of the pain. This is not my world. It feels very foreign to me. This is not where I belong. In my world, people love each other and help each other. The homeless receive the helping hands, the wholesome stone soups. And all the vacant houses are filled with the laughter of children, not the tears of mothers and fathers. I question how far we will allow evil to go. Will we sit back and watch as more and more people fall victim to the corrupt minds and laws designed to inhibit, destroy, or to eliminate? Where depopulation governs the daily menus, poisons drench the thirsty throats. Where children gr gasp their last breath while tears from mothers the very vessels of life drown out the hope of all. Have we, by designed programming, been trained into a point where we turn the other way, enforcing and embracing evil as if it were right? Can we condone that ignorance? Can we condone picking up a phone and turning in a homeless person knowing that they'll be thrown into a camp or jail? Are we at the point where that's who we are? I don't know. Can we not set aside the non-essentials long enough to rethink our standing on the wrongs? <laughs> the wrongs that are sitting right in front of our face? 
Can we not rethink this? Do we not see that this leader has in the open, right up in our face while smiling, lied over and over and over again while the crowds applauded him? He stands there and smiles and smirks and nods his head and we clap while he's lying? Have we not seen his big smile for his narcissistic achievement? Sure we have. We've all seen it. Or do we? Oh, he alone has led us on a path that Satan himself, by whatever means, has paved for the human race. The very envy, driven hate that Satan has for each and every one of us. And yet, knowingly, we submit over and over. To what end? The end of the good life? The end of all things rewarding? The end of hope? The end of the very lifeline that our pumping hearts confirm? Should we not rethink this? Should not our hearts overflow with love for all living things? Should we not take up arms against the uncaring, in battle for the weak, the meek, the lost, and those full of fear? Is it not our jobs to prevent the corrupt from destroying another blade of grass on this earth that we call our home. Would you not ask that someone wipe their feet when they're walking in to prevent them from spreading mud on your precious carpet? And yet, we allow the corrupt leaders to spread bull manure all over, not just our world, but our children and grandchildren's futures. Silently commanding that they will have nothing left to rejoice about, let alone look forward to. Our silence is commanding that. Is it not time that we face the storm head on? Demanding that, that it not destroy any more than it already has? Yes, it is time. The so-called government, which is not for the people, must fall from the fake grace it thinks it is under. No longer can we afford to turn our heads and dismiss the crimes against humanity of which there are far too many to list in this video. Many, many crimes against humanity have been taking place right in front of us. The storm. You see, my friends and family, until we love enough to really care and demand a stop to this, it will only get worse. So I implore each and every one of you to help stop this insanity. Demand that the right under the laws of humanity, not their laws, 
but demand the right under the laws of humanity, not any government, that any and all laws be stricken from the books which prevent the helping hands for those less fortunate. Where we might feed the hungry in the parks without fear of prosecution, where we might help house the homeless, where we might help them to get back on their feet to find and guide them to a better way of life. You're probably thinking, how can we do that? Friends, it's quite simple. We have them strike the ill-thought, uncaring, cold-hearted laws off the books. They don't belong in America. We have always been a country that welcomed those in need, welcomed the immigrants, set them up. Many were sent to school. They were given homes and cars to make sure they could get a start to a better life. Do our homeless people deserve any less? No. No, they do not. You know, our money would be far better spent on these things rather than the senseless wars the pornographic websites within our Pentagon where our officials are satisfying their disgusting lust or a president's golf games and so much more. No longer will we accept no longer will we accept money being used for foreign aid. Why are we sending money over to other countries? You know, you've seen Carrie. That money needs to be spent at home on the woes of our own country to rebuild our infrastructure, to help the homeless, the needy, the lost, to fight and combat the pharmaceutical drug trafficking taking place in every doctor's office around our nation. We need to spend the money here at home and rebuild what was once the greatest country. And it's up to us. It's up to us. We need to write and we need to let the administration our city fathers, our governors, our senators, Congress, let them know that no longer will it, we accept money being used for foreign aid while the needy are right here at home. It is time that we take our country back. And as for you, Google, are you listening, Google? NSA, are you listening? You listeners, have you got your ears on? Back off. Back off. Or we will disband you by means of vacating this venue. We will vacate YouTube. We will vacate Google. And we, the people, will move to a better, better venue designed by we the people, for the people, and much more friendly to the people. We can do that, you see. We're brilliant. We created you. We, we created the government. It's time we take it down. Now, friends and family, that is all I had to say. Is it negative? Not at all. Are these real issues? Absolutely. Do I believe we can? Yes, we can. Onward. We move onward against the storm, pushing it out of our way. I love you all. 
great big hugs, and no fear. Never fear. That's their food. We will starve them. Catch you guys later. Great big hugs and a whole bunch of love.